Hi, welcome to What to Buy, the show that tells you what to buy when you want to buy. Each episode, we'll be covering a different component to tell you what you need to know when building a PC. Today, we'll be covering graphics cards. So what is a graphics card? It is an extra component that is designed to display the nice pictures you see on your computer. It has its own processor and RAM, but it functions differently from the regular versions. We won't go into the specifics, but it's enough to know that they handle the information differently. Normal processors are also capable of doing the work of a graphics card, but that will take up a lot of computing power and slow everything else down. Most processors are now also made with extra built-in graphics capabilities. This is known as the integrated graphics. This is fine for everyday use, and maybe games that are not so graphically intensive. Stuff like League of Legends will run just fine. However, Battlefield 4 will not. If you want to play games or do high performance work, you want to invest in a good graphics card. Graphics cards ultimately fall within two different brands, AMD's Radeon and Nvidia's GeForce. So how do you choose a graphics card? Well, there are several things to note, and let's get to it. We'll start with VRAM. This is video RAM, and there are two things to note about it. First, how much RAM is on offer. Second, the type of VRAM involved. Some graphics cards involve more VRAM, but at a lower bandwidth to keep costs down. Next is graphics API support. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and is not something you want to get into yet. All you need to know is that if you are playing the latest games, you will want a graphics card that will support at least DirectX 11.1 and OpenGL 4.3. Finally, for the more affluent gamer, you will want to look into Crossfire X or SLI support. This allows multiple graphics cards to be linked together to become an even more powerful component. Identifying graphics cards. Let's begin with AMD's Radeon. The Radeon brand is licensed out to many manufacturers. For example, it is built by Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and many more. However, basically all use the same naming conventions. Currently, there are two series from Radeon, the Radeon HD series and the Radeon R series. When identifying the Radeon HD series, the leftmost digit is the generation number. The next two digits represent how powerful the card is, and the zero at the end of the four-digit number is there to make everything else look bigger. The Radeon R series is the newest of the AMD's Radeon line and introduces a different naming convention. The number next to the R determines the target market. R7 is for the mid-range user, while the R9 is for high performance. The three-digit number that follows helps you identify the card. The leftmost digit represents the generation number, while the following two tell you how powerful the card is in relation to the rest of the series. The NVIDIA GeForce features three types of cards, the mid-range GT, the high-end GTX, and the budget-conscious GTS. It would be helpful to note that the GTS has been mostly supplanted by integrated graphics. So how do you tell these apart? Well, similar to the Radeon R series, they feature a three-digit code. The leftmost number is the generation number, while the two other digits represent how powerful the card is. GeForce cards also sometimes have a TI behind the name. This is to indicate that it is the titanium edition, and is more powerful than a non-TI card. It is also helpful to note that TI is the periodic symbol for titanium. Finally, GeForce also has the Titan, which costs as much as a new computer and doesn't need a number to tell you how good it is. Well, that's it for graphics cards. Stay tuned for more WTB, we have a lot more to show you. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And ultimately, subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.